So I bought a couple roses. Um, being Valentine's Day, you get them for pretty good price. <laughs> now that it's over with, um, they are a little bit wilted. You can see from the outer petals, they're not pristine. But I'm just going to use them to show you different ways to press roses. Now the stems are very thick, so you will want to press the flower separate from the stem for sure. And the stem probably isn't going to be that flat when left in its normal form. So I'm gonna cut off the flower as close to the flower as I can get it. And there are different ways to do this. Um, one of the ways I think is, is kind of fun, it gives you two flowers out of one, is if you reach in very carefully around the petals, you grab the inside ones close to the bottom Twist gently you want to be careful you don't damage any petals then you have a big rose And you have a bud or another rose this one was pretty big and so with this you can then lay it down and press it flat and open in your press and this one you can you see the middle one the middle of it came out and so it's left some of that um, some space so it's not so full and you can do the same again here too if you really want it depends on what you're what you're looking for because that is still a lot of petals and is still going to be very bulky to press it all comes down to what you want and what you're looking for in your pressed flowers but this is just how you maximize you can maximize um, your flowers so if you, depending on how big your bud is that you want, you know, you can, you can press it like that. You can break it down even further. You can take the petals and just press the petals in and by themselves to use for different things. Um, if you dry it like this, they will stick together. And so they are loose right now. So if you are careful how you put it in your flower press, they will stick together when they dry um, and then you can use it in a project as well for another open rose. So that's my favorite way of doing it. It just gives you lots of different options on what you can do with one rose. So I have the outer part of the rose and I'm going to have to do shorter bursts for these because these are store-bought and you can tell they're already starting to wilt. They've sat in the store for a week too long or so. And uh, so I'm gonna adjust accordingly because they're not gonna have the full moisture that they would if they were freshly picked. So you always wanna just kind of take and aware of the, con the conditions of the flower, how dry it feels, how wilted it is, because those, these brown spots here are probably going to be exaggerated. Um, 
and become more noticeable once it's dry. But the inside ones are great and when it flattens out you may or may not be able to see that one. Um, I could pull it off, take another petal, put it there. You know, you can you can do things to doctor it up. But sometimes I just like the natural look of it, even though it's not 100%, um, even though it's not undamaged. So we're going to take this and I'm going to try to open it up without losing any petals. And if they fall off, you can still just position them because most of the time they stick once they're dry anyway, they'll stick to whatever they're touching. And so we can put this flower back together just by drying it together. You know, some of the middle parts are coming out, so I'm going to just get rid of those. I'm going to just gently try and flatten this out. Now the petals are not flat, so they're not going to lay perfectly flat. Um, you can carefully position them, move them around some, but they're not going, they may fold. It's just because the flower, the petals are not flat to begin with, and you're trying to make them to go flat, which is also not a problem. Now this one has come off, but I'm just going to tuck it back in there. Kind of hold it in place while I get the top of the press. So I've got the cotton and the felt with one hand. We're going to try and roll it down over so that I can, with the other hand, kind of position them as much as possible. Where I want them to go. And even if you don't get this, um, the felt and stuff on straight, don't position, don't reposition the cotton because you may move your flower, but you can carefully reposition the felt if you need to. But really, it doesn't matter if it's sticking out a bit, as long as the clips will go on. It will be just fine and it is it is um, this is still bulky in the middle so you might have to squeeze it a bit to get the clips on Carefully lift these because it can stick. As you can see, those top ones are sticking. And the front usually sticks worse than the back, but any of it can stick.
just carefully peeling these off. Now I can feel they're still kind of sticky. They don't have that papery, that nice papery feel to them. So it is going to have to go in again. And it is warm right here in the middle where it was the thickest. So I'm going to put the press back together and I'm going to let it cool in the press and it will continue to wick the moisture away from the flour and keep drying it. And then once it has cooled, then I will put it in again. So you don't want to risk the flour getting too hot because then that's when you risk burning it, turning it brown, that kind of thing. So we're just going to seal it up and let it cool and I'll just check back after a few minutes. And then we will put it in again. So it's still a little warm. You can feel it right there. But I did want to show you another way you could do this. Just, just needs a couple more minutes. If you're pressing a lot of flowers, you can have um, take this refill out with the flour in it. Just use a different refill as long as the platens themselves are not hot because you don't want them being hot, which then can risk you know, burning something. If things get too hot, that's just how it goes. So the trick is to not let things get too hot. But if it's just the inside, then you can put in another refill and we can keep on going. So this is the second part when I pulled out the more of the middle and there's nothing holding these together. So what I can do is I can press them separately or I can arrange them so that when they dry and are stuck together, they look like another rose that's flat in the middle. That's just flattened out. You know, so you can whoops, <laughs> carefully arrange them so that they will resemble a rose when it's done. You just wouldn't have that very middle part on there, but you can do it like that. Again, just carefully arranging. And this is still a lot of layers, so I probably could get two, if we go like this. So really just get creative, knowing that as they press, they will stick together. So we can do one like this. And you'll be able to see how it comes out and then you can choose how you you like to do it. So you just kind of stagger them a little bit because that's how rose petals are. They just overlap each other. Make the circle. And again, we're going to roll it down, trying not to move how we've placed them. Put these on for the same as we put the other rows on.
Again, we're just going to carefully peek at them so we can get a feel. They're pretty warm, like the other one was, and still damp. So I'm going to remove that refill, and we're going to put the other one back in with our full flower here, which has now cooled down. We're gonna feel it again because it did continue to dry while it was cooling. Now the middle has stuck pretty good. Carefully. Rip that off of there. There we go. Some of those have come loose again. That actually dried fairly good while it was cooling down. It's still a little sticky in the middle, but the edges are getting papery. So we're gonna put it in for a short burst, shorter burst. I'm bending the cotton, trying not to bend the flower. Because the middle wasn't dry yet, it's stuck again. We've still got some sticky parts where the, this is like three petals that overlap here. Where it's single petals, these are drying, so we need to take um, note of that because you don't want to over process the outside because they dry from the outside in because it's thinner and gets thicker Again, it's warm So we're going to cover this up Come back to our other one This is also a good way that you can press a lot of flowers in a short time Now this is the underside and didn't quite have that one lined up right. That one should be centered. And because it's not quite dry yet, you can see it's lifted. You do take a risk when you do this because they could, um, they could wrinkle on you and then you can't get them flat. But this is because it's fairly dry, but not completely dry. I'm just gonna go like this and position it back towards the middle and we'll see if that will stick because it is fairly dry it may not might have just left it there but 
we'll see. I'm just showing you the different things you can do and how they work out so that you guys can you know, see the outcomes, see different techniques and decide what you, what you do, but they're pretty close to dry. They're still damp again, where, you know, damp where they overlap a lot. So we're going to put this one in again for a shorter burst. can see there is still moisture coming out of both. So we use that as an indication too, how the dry they're getting. spot that has stuck there it's carefully holding it down We're still still damp here, still a touch damp. So we just keep doing short bursts until they're until they're dry. What we're looking for is that nice papery feel, which these ones are getting there. But it, if it's sticky um, or anything but paper, then it doesn't mean it's a, it means it's not a hundred percent dry. Unless if you if you get that papery feel almost like that wrapping tissue paper feel to it, then you know that it is 100% dry. But you need that feeling everywhere because it could be that way on one part and still sticky or a little gummy on another part, which means it's not 100% dry. So that's very important before you use your flowers or you store your flowers, whether you do it in the microwave till it's 100% or you can take the press as it is, say like, the edges are getting too dry and I don't want to risk them turning brown on me in the microwave. I can just take my press, put it in a sunny window, come back in a few hours, depending on how much direct sunlight it's getting, warmth, and it will continue to dry just like a traditional press. Um, so there are a lot of people that do it that way. They get it started and it still significantly speeds up the drying process.
can see the spots getting smaller than what it was, so we know it's still drying out. The moisture that is coming out is getting less and less. Okay, now we have papery feel. Now you can see them curling a little bit. What I would do, because it's still warm, I would put it back um, in the refill at least, just so that they can continue to cool and lay flat. So these are kind of our extra roses and you'll, you'll, you can tell from the middle, they don't look like a real rose. Um, we'll pull this one out over here. You know, they do look a little bit different because they don't have the center in them. But you can use these for, like if you're doing a bouquet, these could go in behind this one. Or you could put other flowers in front and you still get the illusion of a rose going on. So that's just one way you can do it. Or again, as I said, you can just lay each petal out and they'll dry much faster because they're just single layer and you can dry them that way. And then you can recreate this with single petals as well and then just glue it back together if you want. There are different ways, many different ways of, of doing that. So we are gonna go back to this one because it isn't quite dry in the middle, but those two are done. So we'll cover this back up so that they can cool down and lay flat for us. We'll put this one back in. Now this is the underside that we haven't peeked at yet. We didn't too, do too bad with the damaged parts. You can tell they're there, but they're not exaggerated too badly. That's the one petal that fell off on me. So I might end up gluing that back on in my project because it doesn't seem to be sticking like I hoped. But that is papery. It is a little gooey just right there, but the petals are papery. So I am gonna stop. I'm just gonna close the press up. I'll put it in a sunny window and then, um, let's see, it's the afternoon now. So, by noontime tomorrow it should be dry because it's not going to get much more sun for the rest of the day but the morning sun should help dry it and it's still a little warm so it'll dry while it's cooling as well i do want to mention if you notice the difference in the color it is it is normal for red flowers to turn a burgundy dark burgundy color 
I'm not sure why, but it's the same as if you were to hang your roses upside down and just dry them. They take on a darker burgundy color as well. And it's just something with the red pigments. There's very few red flowers that will actually stay red when they're pressed. So don't worry about the change in the color. That is uh, completely normal. So we'll just go put this in, in my sunny window. Now we're going to do our rosebud that we made by pulling out the middle of the flower. So if you look again, these are not stuck together, but there is still a whole lot of petals inside. A lot of bulk in there. So we can, it really depends on your project, how you want to do this. If you're going to do a 3D, uh, where you will see all sides of the flower, you will want to press it like this on its side. But it's going to take a bit to get it to dry. We will most likely end up starting it in the microflora and then putting it in a sunny, win sunny window. Um, the other option, if you were putting it in a frame or something with a backing where you're not going to see the other side of the flower you actually can take this and break it in half. And I'll show you in a different flower. We're going to press this one hole. But um, if you do it in half, then you end up with two just profile of a rose. As long as you're not going to see the back, it won't matter because the back is not going to look like a rose when you're done doing it that way. But we are just going to press it like this. Always rolling this down over it. Are gonna have to press it down because it is so bulky in the middle. I have to squish it to get the clips on. And I didn't get the felt lined up, but again, that's okay. See, there's lots of moisture that came out of that. We wipe off the platens each time so that we can gauge as this gets smaller. So what we're looking for is we look for, we look at the moisture that's on it and then we dry it off. And then the next time we look at what, how much moisture is on it again. And I can, I can feel by this that it is still very spongy and it's quite warm. So I'm going to close up the press. I'm going to let it cool down. And then we'll 
then we'll peek afterwards because it will continue drying as it cools. While we're waiting for the rosebud to cool down, let's talk about stems. Now this is a very thick, tough stem, and you may not have much luck getting it flat, even when it's dried. But some things you can try, I'm just gonna cut it short so that I can handle it a little bit better. You can cut the leaves off it, and you can definitely press the leaves. Taking, taking note that the stem here is going to dry last. So you wanna pay attention and stop when the leaves are done so you don't overprocess the leaves. These ones with a thinner stem might not have so much problem. So we'll set those aside. Now there are some things you can try. I have my X-Acto knife. You want to be very careful you don't cut yourself because it is kind of hard to, to, um, to do this. Yeah, I want to have a workspace. It doesn't matter if you scratch it, a cutting board or something too. And we're just going to cut it right down the middle. Not easy to cut. And it's not easy to get a straight line, but you, you want to try to get it as straight as possible. But if it's not perfectly straight, you don't, don't have to worry about it. I didn't cut the whole way through because I just have a little blade and the stem got thicker. any sharp knife you can do if you've got sharp kitchen knives that you don't mind using or anything So you can cut them in half, that reduces the thickness. And then you can also scrape out this inside part. Because again, this way only works if you're not going to see the back side of it. So you have to kind of have in mind what you want to do with them, what kind of projects you make to know whether what technique you want to use. But all we're trying to do is thin things out as much as possible to help with the drying. Because if you're not going to see it, it doesn't need to be there. All it does is make the drying time longer and then you risk turning brown on you, not drying well. It just makes your job a little bit harder. And by, by hollowing out the middle, it will also help it lay flatter. And that's what I'm going to try to do the same for the top.
can see how hollowed out it is. We'll do the same for the other side. Now I didn't get it completely half and half, so this side is a little bit thicker, but we're still gonna hollow it out. There's just more, more to remove. And these techniques, even if you don't use a micro flare, I still recommend you use these techniques because it will still aid in the drying process. These aren't just because we're using the micro flare. This is how I would prep a rose, even if I was using just a traditional flower press, a book, if I don't have time to actually um, sit down and dig out my microflure for the microwave or my kitchen's being used or something like that where I'm not going to microwave it I can still put it in my microflure put it in a sunny window two to three days it's dry it's still a lot faster than just a traditional flower press but the prepping of the flower, of any flower, I still do the same, regardless of the method I'm using to dry it. Bearing in mind how I'm going to use it once it's dry. If you take the time to do this kind of prep, the outcome of your flower pressing will be much better. We got it all hollowed out. Now it will lay flatter and dry better. So we'll check on our rosebud. It's had a little time to cool down. It's very bulky. You can, if you feel your rosebud, if you try it, you, you know, it's quite a bit thicker and then goes down. And I did it this way because I want to show you. Let's see if we can get it off the other side. So I can pick it up and show you what I'm talking about.
when you've pressed it, you're not even seeing all those little insides. They're shorter than the outside. So if you want to see them, you either peel away the outer part or you would remove them. All of that did was create bulk with trying to press this. Now we can press it, but I wanted you to see what that means. Um, so when you're prepping your flour, getting ready to put it in the press, keep in mind what will it look like when it's flat? What will you see? What will you not see? What can you remove that won't hurt the, sh the look of the flower at all? So we're going to lay it back down and continue drying it. But I could have removed the middle part and had even a smaller bud. So roses are just so versatile in how you prep them, how you prepare them, what you want them to look like, and how many flowers you can get out of just one rose. So we're going to put this back in for another short burst. Still very wet. And because of all the moisture in it, because it's so thick, it gets hot. So we're gonna let it cool again. And we just continue this process until it's dry. We're going to check on our rosebud again. And it is feeling better. Flip it over and peel it off. You don't have to worry about these stains. As long as they're not enough where they're actually crunchy on your liner, they won't come off on your other flowers when you press them. It just makes your liners colorful, that's all. So we're getting there. It's getting thinner. It's still tacky and spongy. So we're gonna put it in again. Each time it's getting drier, so each time we do a shorter burst, and then if we get down to it, we just keep continuing with 10 second bursts until it's until they're dry.
oh, quite a bit of moisture coming out. But we still always check because these parts at the top where it's not so thick, they're gonna dry before these ones, before the really thick spots um, dry. So we wanna check these to make sure we don't overprocess the, the tips. But they're still okay. We're gonna go back in again and we just repeat. Or you can put it together and stick it in a sunny window and leave it for a few hours or check on it every now and then if you don't want to keep sitting and putting it in for 10 seconds. All right, so I did about 50 seconds more at 10 seconds at a time. So I did five more bursts of 10 seconds, checking it in between. Because of the thickness and it is feeling good it's no longer spongy it's pretty solid feels papery everywhere you touch it and that's about how it came out so that's a little rosebud we bring over all our roses here This one out of the way. This is what we got out of one rose. And again, that one petal I'm going to have to glue on when I use it, but. So we got all of this out of one rose. If we had taken that down further, we could have had a larger bud and a much smaller bud. But those are the different ways you can prep a rose to press it. Enjoy, we would love to see what you end up pressing, how you press it and what you end up making with your roses and other flowers. So please uh, share them in the Facebook group. So now that we've done the roses, let's tackle the stems that we'd hollowed out earlier while we were waiting. We're also going to put in the leaves. Now we do usually recommend putting like all leaves, doing all stems, doing similar things separately. But if you keep your eye on them, and pull out the ones that are done as they dry, then you can, it'll be just fine to do it all together. It just does make it a little bit easier when it's all leaves. So they all dry at a somewhat steady rate because these are gonna take longer to dry. But we will just pull the leaves out as they are dry and it's, it's fine. You just don't want to risk over processing one while you're waiting for the other one to dry. So you have to pay attention to everything that's in the press.
Okay, just with that one burst, the leaves are just about done. They're only going to take a little bit now, so we'll do 10 seconds. This is why you, um, it's better to do them apart. And these are still gummy. So we're just going to do two seconds, 10 seconds, I mean, so that we don't over process any one part here. Leaves typically don't take a long time. They don't hold a lot of water like flower petals do. So generally, leaves take much shorter time than flowers. Okay, the leaves have that papery feel. They're not, they're not crispy, but they do hold their own. And most importantly, they have that dry papery feel to them. So we're gonna remove those. Now let's check these. These are almost dry too. Down here is pretty stiff and dry. They are where the wetter part up by the flower is. That's still spongy. Same with this one up here. It's, it's still, you can see it's still spongy and flexible and stuff, but down here is getting dry. So we wanna pay attention to down here. I'm gonna do an, one more 10 second burst. And then if it's still wet, it will go in the sunshine because I don't want to risk burning this down here. They are very close, but still the very top is still tacky and spongy, but the rest of it is dry. So I'm going to close up the press and I'm going to set it in a sunny window to let this top thicker, wetter part dry because I don't want to burn or over process the rest of the stem. So we'll leave this here. It will get sun throughout the day.